Hi, I'm Charlotte Mayor Anthony Fox, and welcome back to The Point. I've got two wonderful guests with me today. These are leaders of what is called the Metropolitan Transit Commission Working Group on Transit Finance. And it is, starts with uh, Mayor Jill Swain from Huntersville and Councilmember David Howard, who is the chair of the Transportation Committee for the City of Charlotte. Welcome. Glad to have you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So we've got this long title, MTC Working Group. <laughs> Tell me what that is about. Actually, the we've been calling it the Transit Finance Working Group. Oh, okay, that's uh, what it we is. Call, we call it a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, and it's sure. a long title, but we've had very little time yes. to, to get people to talk about um, how to finance the total transit plan. Well, a lot of it came from um, your charge. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, as chair of um, MTC and, and the Mayor of Charlotte, I mean, you kind of charged us both with looking at ways to move a system uh, forward that is stalled. I mean, you know, we don't have the, the money okay. to keep it moving with the absent sales tax, and the challenge for us moving forward is how do we pay Wait for a it? second, wait a second. You're saying that the transit system is stalled? We got the blue line coming, there's other stuff happening, but what, what do you mean when you say stall? What the do you mean? progress um, the, in taking care of the rest of the vision. Yes, you do have the blue line extension moving forward. Sure. We have um, active bus um, transportation options. We have the current blue line moving forward. But if we are to look forward with the entire vision of the transit plan, we don't have the funds to do that. I mean, as you, as you know, I mean, the Blue Line Extension probably will be the last project funded its way on a federal level. We have challenges kind of on the state level right now, so trying to figure out how we move forward was a challenge. And we and had the federal a, level. And yeah, we had a great group of people, too. I mean, Tell me about the group. Who, who's on the group? Besides oh, you, you, do, you do the name, name dropping. Um, <laughs> I can tell you we have um, three former mayors, um, Bill Trog, um not try again. <laughs> Bill Thunberg. Thunberg, uh, Harvey Gann, and Lee Myers. Uh, we have a former county manager. We have a, a array of uh, business finance people, um, several developers, because what we were doing was saying, you know, if we're going to take a land use into consideration, how we finance it in consideration, we need all these brains at the table. And community activists. Yes. Um, and what we found was from the very first meeting, we hit the ground running. People were talking, people were thinking outside of the box. Yeah. It was really very exciting. So yeah. we're just there We're just there to listen. Um, they make us look good. Tell me to go to the bathroom every now and again. That's <laughs> all we were doing. <laughs> tell, tell me what this group is learning about our system that they didn't know when they walked in the door. I, I would say, um, number one, they learned that we don't have the money to do the total yeah. system. Yeah. Uh, number two, I think it has been very helpful for everybody to learn that we need to and we should be talking about the entire transportation system. Um, and that was, uh, that I, I think a lot, it, it was. And I, I think a lot of people um, have gotten caught up or had gotten caught up in some of the media reports that we're talking about this specific line or we're talking about this specific line. And so it was refreshing for everybody to realize we're talking about a vision for the future and it's everything. And we've been creative. Uh, one of the meetings that we had, uh, we came telling everybody we we're going to break them up into different lines. And we uh, intentionally put them with lines they knew nothing about. A lot of people have come to this kind of on one side or the other, want this one or that one, and we kind of mixed it up. Mm -hmm. So by the time we left that session, it was like, wow, all this does fit together. Mm -hmm. If we don't do all of it, we have an incomplete system. Which has created advocates. Yes. Um, everybody is an advocate for each each of the lines. It's, it's been absolutely awesome. And I think we should also um, talk about the fact that, and, and this is per your recommendation, we had the uh, representative from That's the right. Chicago Infrastructure Trust come and talk to us about what Chicago is doing. We've had a representative from Denver come That's and right. talk about Denver, which is, um, and I, I was recently at a P3 conference where the Denver model and the Chicago models have been thrown up out there as examples in the country that, that we should be looking at and following. Well, our group has had the opportunity to have representatives from them come in. We've also had um, Forest City, That's a right. developer who has done this nationally. They came in and talked to the group as well. So um, and, it's been good. And I think what you're going to see is us come out of this saying that we need kind of all the above approach to this. Um, what we know is that in Denver, um, compared to what we've done, we've had maybe four sources, federal, state, local, and kind of one other one I can't remember. 
Uh, but you look at Denver's model, they've had 16 sources in, in one line. Um, I think what we got to figure out is how to use a, a variety of financing options, look at land use and how it plays into it. Maybe we're talking about doing a, a TIF district along all the lines so we capture all the value. I mean, you should see some really creative options come out of this community. Well, De Denver's also um, gone across how many county lines? Oh, yeah. They have eight counties that make up their, um, their transit area, and all eight counties have bought into this. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what we should Obviously, be doing. we're excited about this because we haven't given you an opportunity to say anything. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. I'm excited. To we know a excited. little bit about transit now, just a little bit. <laughs> so, so, okay, a couple of things. The average person in this region believes that the transit system is going to happen. We've got a half cent sales tax. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with the perception that, hey, we got this tax, it's supposed to pay for the whole thing? What's the problem? How do we change that perception? You know what, I, I really believe that this committee is the start of changing that perception. I think it was a very wise move, thank you, um, to get these activists and community leaders involved in this discussion because we can go out as elected officials because we've known this, we've worked on it for years. Um, we can go out and tell people, but in, and that will make a dent, but when you have people who are actually out there talking with their groups at the Y or their, their friends who meet at Starbucks and explain to them how important this is. Um, Manoj actually um, was explaining, one of our committee members was um, talking with some friends of his and they came up with the idea of naming rights for stations, which he brought back to the committee, um, the carbon footprint um, discussion. So just our committee members going out to the community is bringing back information that I think is going to help change the perception. And we also uh, realize that it will be part of the recommendations that we put together kind of a, a speaking tour um, communications plan to go out and reorient the community and the region to the fact that this is a, a important, an important part of our transportation system that we need to recommit to. So David and I are taking our show on the road. We've actually done it already a couple times. Well, so. that's true. I'm ben, glad to be is part of the tour, you know. That's <laughs> what, you know. Well, I don't know. You have, we, you have to qualify. <laughs> Didn't sign up, right? <laughs> Didn't pay the honorarium. We're going to tell you about it, Mayor Charles. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me ask you this, this as well, because this has been part of conversations nationally. You've got this disconnect with government at every level yes. straining for resources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, on the other hand, you have private individuals, private institutions that have huge amounts of capital sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. And I know a lot of what you've all been looking at are 3P type of relationships, public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. What are, you talked about a couple of models. What do you think are some of the most promising ones for our transit system? Regarding the lines, mm -hmm. um, I would say um, mm -hmm. and that probably the red line sure. commuter rail has great potential for mm -hmm. P3. I'd also say, and I think you agree with me on this, the streetcar yes. ha has a lot of potential mm -hmm. for P3. And, and I would all, <clears throat> true. And yeah. I would also add that from what we are hearing, there are companies out there who want to look at these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think it is incumbent upon us to bring in um, Nat and national and international sure. organizations and have them look yeah. at our yeah. transit system. You know, make a, 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 one of the things that came out of this conversation is really interesting to me is to approach this almost from a broker standpoint. Yeah. To actually go out and share with the development community and the 3P community that these um, opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. Not wait for them to find them. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe package them like you would a piece of property, you know, with a broker and talk about all of the incentives that could come with that property all of the great things going on around that property, all the plans that are going on, and take it to the development community. Invite the three people down that, you know, Jill met in New York to come look at this package of different options to say, look, this is our system, we want you to be a part of it, mm -hmm. which is a, a different approach. I, I think so too. I, I think it's really important to note that you all allowed me to have the opportunity to attend the P3 forum in New York City. Um, and I, I think I said this at, at our meeting on Monday, I was the only elected official there. Mm. And it was 
It was overwhelming, it was thrilling, but when I had the opportunity to talk at the end of the day, I truly felt like a rock star because here are the international corporations who had been saying all day long, we need to get to the elected officials, we need to have the elected officials champions, and I could say, the Charlotte area is open for business. We yeah. will be your champions. And I had business cards. And so they're interested. And it goes to what you said about the disconnect. I mean, you know, you had this room full right. of folks that wanted to do business with, with government. Right. And then you have a room full of government people to get together and talk about the need for <laughs> private investment. We've got to right. marry those two. And that's what will make a difference in Charlotte. Well, here's another um, challenge and opportunity for us because a lot of the tools we need to unlock that private capital require legislative approval. Right. So talk a little bit about that. You What's talk about the that, David. How are you going to combat that? <laughs> <laughs> you just take care of it in the next week or so. <laughs> I'm going to get our friends in Washington and, and Raleigh to help us. Um, well, <laughs> for instance, let me give you an example. Um, we have the TIF, TIF legislation um, that was passed several years ago, but it's not as friendly as the TIF legislation in Colorado. Mm -hmm. That's so tax increment finance. Tax increment and finance. Um, mm -hmm. So we've actually already started talking to the folks in Denver to try to compare what needs to change in ours. Mm -hmm. We've actually already had preliminary conversations with the leadership, if you will, in, in Raleigh about the need to change some of the way TIF is set up. Mm -hmm. um, what the governor's doing with his new transportation. Um, Trans Transit Mobility Fund. It may be another option for us. It may work better for the red line. I mean, you know, Sounds so. Sounds like it will. So, I mean, you know, there's some things that are already in place, but, you know, we'll have a legislative agenda as a part of this as well, for sure. And, you know, here, here is the, uh, the Republican who has to throw this out on the table, too, um, that the sales tax issue to this committee sure. is something that we will have to revisit as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, of that's course, right. that's community. You'll definitely have to have community buy-in and community discussion and community education. But that is something that will have to be discussed in Raleigh as well. And as you know, we've got early indications from the folks in Raleigh, they want to give us options to deal with our transit needs, so. Mm -hmm. On our own. On our own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we think about this system, uh, one of the other big opportunities is the fact that about a billion and a half of the four and a half billion dollar price tag is time. So, you know, in theory, mm -hmm. that escalation could be avoided if we could figure this out and get these projects moving. That's right. What's been the conversation around that? Um, well, the fastest way is looking at the three P's. I mean, you know, there's a three P opportunities along Ray Line and Streetcar now mm -hmm. that we should pursue aggressively. Um, because if we could figure those out and we have set deals, then we can go figure out the exact amount of match that we need. Um, so, I mean, I think doing the three P's are probably the most aggressive way. I think so, too. And, and I think what we have discussed as well is that there is no reason why we cannot do a little something on each line at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, people realize, I believe, that some lines still have to have design. Uh, mm -hmm. Some lines still have to have environmental sure. done. Um, some still ha have to have the discussions with P3 or whatever. If we can show the citizens that our goal is the entire transit system mm -hmm. and that we're working on a component somehow of each line, mm -hmm. I think we're going to have greater community buy-in. And our committee thinks that as well. Sure. Well, I'll tell you what, you all are doing great work. I'm really proud of what you but all put together. We're excited about what we do. Yeah, 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 great we, team. We, we work well together. Yeah, we you really, really do. And yeah, we have fun. <laughs> that, is, that is true. If you can't tell. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> Thank you, Jill Swain and David Howard, for joining us at The Point. Uh, if you want to know more about our transit system, you can feel free to go to charmec.org and uh, look there. It shows you the entire 2030 transit plan that uh, they're trying to help us get funded. Thank you very, very much for being here. I'll see you next time on The Point.